Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Today I would like to talk about some plants that I think import really badly. So what I mean by that basically is when you buy the plant, how it travels to you. Now what I will say is there is some distinction to be made here between importing a plant and buying it retail. Now some of these plants perform the same, whether you import them or you send them retail. So there's a couple of plants on this list where if I sent them to a customer or I got them in from my supplier, similar things would happen. And I will point that out along the way. But there is an important distinction to make here between importing from a supplier where the roots have been treated really aggressively and they've been left out in a hot country and they've gone under like huge temperature fluctuations and all the rest and sending it retail which theoretically it could be the same or theoretically it could be a little bit more gentle. So there is a slight distinction there but today I want to talk about plants that just they just can't really handle it. They really can't. And I'm not saying don't buy these plants. I'm just saying this is some shit I've noticed and kind of beware when, you, when you're buying them really. Make sure that you're prepared to see a decline before you see an improvement. The first plant I'd like to talk about, I'm kind of on the fence about. I'm not going to lie. So this plant here is Philodendron plowmanii, and it's very gorgeous. It's very, very beautiful. The thing is, I find there is a little bit of a difference between shipping it out retail, so the way I would ship it, which is bare root, but no harsh chemical treatments because the plants are grown here in a certain way. That means that we don't have to treat the roots. And when I get them from my supplier, when I get them from my supplier, they it's really hit and miss depending on the supplier I get them from. Sometimes they come through the door like the last ones I've just had in and they're just terrible. They're not good. They're dropping leaves. They're looking yellow. They're looking limp. They're looking horrendous. Sometimes they come in and they're absolutely stunning and they don't take a hit at all. I find shipping them out retail to be very, very good. Actually, I find them to be very hardy. These might wilt in shipping, but honestly, it is one of these plants where if you give it water again, it will just pop back up and just be amazing. So it's a really beautiful plant, by the way. If you haven't seen it before, it's very, very pretty. I love it. I love it so much. I wanted to include it. Maybe I shouldn't have. I am on the fence. Sending it out retail, in my experience, is good. It just might dehydrate a lot, but you won't get too much damage when you hydrate it again. You're not going to get like tons of leaves dropping off, depending on how severe it is. They tend to be okay. More often than not, they come quite bad from my supplier. I'm not quite sure where to place them, but I want to add this in as like a little introductory plant into this list. When they're good, they're good. When they're bad, they're really bad. I guess that's what I'm getting at here. They can really be quite temperamental. So if you want one of these in, just take into account where you're getting it from. If it's straight from the supplier overseas in Thailand or somewhere like that, you might have more of an issue. If you're getting it from somewhere more local, I think you'd be fine. Okay, let's do another heart-shaped philodendron. I should quickly mention, and I should have mentioned this at the start of the video, I'm not really covering anthurium today, and that is because anthurium generally can be very temperamental. So doing a video on the stuff that doesn't ship well that's anthurium, it's not redundant, but you're going to get a lot of anthurium that ship badly. So I've tried to keep it to EG, Monstera, and philodendron, just to keep things a little bit more centralized. So the next philodendron I want to show you is this guy here. This guy is very pretty, by the way. I will have to tip him a little bit. He's very beautiful. Beautiful. This is Philodendron pastazanum, only he's like extra, extra silvery right here. If I just tip him down like so. He's very, very pretty plant. But I tell you something, I've had this plant a long time. Can you tell? This is one of the remaining original leaves that I got the plant with. It's taken a hit. Now the other two leaves have gone. And they went in about 72 hours. They were yellow, they were dropping off. These plants don't travel brilliantly. They're not so bad retail. They can still be quite bad in my experience. They're not excellent shippers, I wouldn't say. In terms of importing them, however, I find them to be quite rough. Of course, your opinion could differ massively from mine, but I do find them to be very, very, very rough on import. They recover reasonably quickly. I do think this one has. Obviously, you can see my growth here. It's all this stuff at the bottom, and that is the original leaf at the top. You can totally tell how long this has been with me, actually. It is a very, very beautiful plant, and I do think they're worth it. And I think they are worth the hit when you get them in and they do tank. I just think you might need to know what you're doing a little bit more with these. I don't think I hear people talk about these enough, but they're very, very gorgeous plants. And I do think you should give them a chance. Just be just be careful. I mean, if you get a plant and you fall in love with it based on the way it looks, i.e. it's got three beautiful leaves, maybe don't fall in love with it. Maybe expect it to go back to one leaf, for example, and then grow it like this back out. And it will reward you. You're just going to have to give it some time. Look at that. Oh, it's a nice plant, that. I quite like it. 
I don't really want to sell that. I think that's quite pretty. Okay, so my next plant here is known as Alocasia reticulata, and it is here to represent basically all Alocasia, because I don't think I've found an Alocasia yet that ship okay. Nearly every single Alocasia that I have ever had into this shop tends to die back to the comb. I, it loses all of its leaves, and you're left with that bulb at the bottom. I have found the same, unfortunately, when I sell them. So I do find this is absolutely universal of alocasia. They don't like being shipped. Now, I do sell my plants bare root because I have to by law in order to sell them overseas. That's just something I have to do. But if you sell these in a pot, it might not be so bad. So I'm not saying you can't buy any alocasia in. If you're selling it in a pot with substrate in and it's undisturbed, they don't tend to lose leaves. They tend to be all right. They might lose one, but they're, they're quite okay. If we're talking about selling it in the usual way that a lot of rare plants are sold nowadays, they cannot handle it, guys. They just they just drop back to the comb every time. And that is a reason, a big reason why I don't really trade in alocasia in the shop. Do I have some? Yeah, sure. I've got a few different ones. I've got some variegated ones. I had some variegated fried eggs somewhere. I've never even sold them on because I know that when I send them in the post, they're going to lose all their leaves and I'm just going to have to refund it anyway. Do you know what I mean? There's no point. So I tend not to trade in alocasia. For example, this plant here, a lot of people ask me about. They ask me if they can buy it. Am I going to propagate it? Am I going to sell it? If I were to take this out and sell this, it would it would die right back. I might get a leaf remaining, but it's probably going to die back to the comb and then it's going to take a while to sprout, which is a big shame because it's gorgeous and it's, it's taken a while to get this size. If you can remember, guys, when I got this plant, it was a little bit bigger than that. It was very, very small. I've had it for ages. But yeah, this represents all alocasia. All alocasia, in my experience, are absolutely shit to import. If you are quite fine with the idea of getting one of these bad boys in, it going back to essentially what you would know as a stump and growing it back out, that is cool. That is fine. Go for it. The corms can rot. I've had that a million and one times. Honestly, I'll show you an example of something similar later on. The comb can rot as well, which means you have nothing. So be very careful. I'm not saying don't import them. Obviously, I'm not. I just feel like they are more of a gamble. And for me personally, there are very, very, very few alocasia that have been sent out from this shop, species-wise, that have done okay. This little guy, this not so little guy, is here to represent that. Uh, also, before we go on this plant, it's supposed to look like this. This is why the plant looks like this. But yeah, he represents all alocasia, be very careful, be prepared to drop all the leaves, be prepared to go back to essentially the bulb, the corn, be prepared for it maybe to rot. Sorry to give you bad news, but happens more often than not, trust me. Trust me. I've got about 300 alocasia under my belt coming into this shop, and I've probably got 20 left, so you do the math. Right then, this next plant, I tell you something, I'm going to put it on the table, I'm going to stare at it while I talk about it because I'm so annoyed with this plant. The amount of refunds I have had to do on these plants would amaze you. I have no problem telling you that because I know that my customers know that. I know that most of you that have bought these plants from me have had an issue with them. And I agree. I have issues with them too. They hate being shipped. They absolutely cannot stand being shipped. I also gifted one of these plants as a little package, I think it was last year now, to Pam's Pretty Plants on YouTube. And even she told me, she was like, this, this ain't doing too good. And I was like, trust me, it's not you. It's this plant. This plant is a nightmare. I'm not going to waste any time. This little guy here, Okay. Yeah, it looks shit. They don't grow very well either. I'm going to be honest with you. This is philodendron lupinum. I, I literally, I can't stress this enough how many refunds I've done. I, ca I cannot tell you. It's my number one refunded plant, apart from one other that I will show you later. Ah, it's just terrible. It's terrible. Roots are really hard to get on this plant as well. It's like it knows it's a viner and it just does not want to push out proper roots. They were growing fine and they were stable on the shop before I sold them. And I had, I had quite a few, but every single time they would get sent out. I tell you now, all of the leaves would go yellow and drop off. You'd be left with sticks. Oh my god, literally, I'm so annoyed with this plant. I'll show you up close just so you can see. This is a very cool plant in theory, by the way. Basically, you start off with these nice, cute, little velvety heart-shaped leaves, and then the plant gets more mature, and this changes completely, and it goes to like a big, glossy, kind of not even heart-shaped anymore. The shape changes completely. It looks a little bit more like an anthurium. Like, it's a cool-ass plant, but seriously, just don't sell them. Honestly, please just don't sell them. Just don't touch them. Don't look at them. Don't do anything. Just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. Don't repot them. Just don't look at them. Don't think about them. Don't associate with them. Don't speak to them. Don't do anything. This is one of my worst shippers of all time. That's how bad it is. On import, they weren't too bad though. And this is what I don't understand. They weren't too bad on import. And I didn't realize how bad they were going to be when I shipped them. They're just horrendous plants, guys. I'm sure they're beautiful. I'm sure they grow gorgeous. I'm sure some of you have beautiful ones. But if you are trading in these things, just take it from me as a little bit of friendly advice. Do not 
bother. Some of you might trade in these anyway, and you already know what I'm talking about. They are an absolute nightmare. So one more time, because I could go on about this plant all damn day. That is philodendron lupinum. Just, just don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Okay, let's talk about the philodendron burly marks. Now then, I have some good things to say about this plant. Honestly, I do. Now, this plant here doesn't import very well. And I think that's because the leaves are so paper thin. I will tip this up so you can see it. It's not a great specimen. It's just, I've kind of let it revert and I've kind of left it. Um, there, are, there is some variegation on there, but it's few and far between. We don't care. When you import these, in my experience, they go downhill really quickly because they're so paper thin. And the roots, as I've got a great example here, actually, because coming out of the bottom of the pot, that's how long I've had it. The roots aren't super, super thick either. They're not really thick and tuberous. They're a little bit more, not hair-like, but they're much thinner. And that instantly tells me that they're water-loving and they're going to dehydrate very quickly and they're not going to love you if they get underwatered. They can tolerate underwatering. This is where it gets really hazy with this plant. This plant is a lot of things, right? I find this really interesting and it's a great beginner plant because you can really learn a lot from this plant and it's also not very expensive. You can pick one of these up for mid double digits probably. Literally not a lot of money. Totally recommend it if you want to get into rare stuff and you want to learn how to look after plants. They're not good to import because they have very, very thin leaves and they have reasonably thin roots. However, they do come back to into their own very quickly. Basically, and I find this a lot with a lot of bad shippers, they also recover very quickly. Some do, some don't. But this plant is one of those plants. It ships not so well, but it springs back very well. It is very tolerant in the long term, but not tolerant in the short term. So if you ship it, it might not do very well, but it will bounce back excessively quickly. It will plump up really, really quickly and it'll look like it, there was never a problem. Yes, you're going to lose some leaves, but you're going to be all right. It's really difficult to place this plant. Changes affect it very quickly. That's the best way I could honestly describe it. It's a very, very odd plant to get to know if you deal in buying and selling of this plant specifically. I wouldn't discourage you from getting this. I actually would do the opposite. I would tell you to get this. If you want to get into the whole rare plant kingdom, so to speak, and you want to deal with variegation and you want to know what it's like to import something, how to cut something, propagate it, sell it, whatever, this is a fantastic plant for that because I've mentioned this before. If you can see the rate at which it kind of multiplies at the stem there, you can see that it kind of goes into overdrive. So you get really good bang for your buck. I recommend this plant, but it's very temperamental. But overall, you're not going to lose your plant. I would be amazed if people lost a lot of these, to be honest. So it's a weird thing. I had to talk about it because it's so weird. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you disagree with anything I've said. That's just what I find about them. I find them just to be... I don't know, they're, they're in their own little world a little bit, to be honest. They're a bit odd. Right, so this next plant imports like absolute shit. And honestly, I think personally it ships like shit. This is one of the plants where, no, it doesn't really matter how you're doing it. It kind of sucks. There are ways to kind of um, recover this plant a bit quicker and, and save it a little bit. But generally, it, it's a big problem. And I don't tend to ship as many of these out anymore as I used to a couple of years ago. Um, I'm talking about, this is, this is actually not mine. I'm borrowing it because I don't really keep these. This is Philodendron Vericosum. It is a type of Philodendron Vericosum. It's quite a nice plant. It's got nice leaves here, here, and on the back. It's nice and red. It's a pretty plant. It's nice. They ship, they ship, they ship like shite. Trust me, it's it's not funny. Not only that, but they're pest magnets as well. I've said this on a video before. Vericosum and spider mites. Oh my God. Good luck. Good luck. I'm very humid in here and I have a batch somewhere Vericosum kept way out of the way. I can see them now, actually. Basically, they get spider mites all the time. So I have to keep them miles away from anything else and they're constantly getting sprayed and it's constantly coming back. And I'm not having that problem on any other plant. Anyway, that's beside the point. We're not talking about pests. We're talking about shipping. They wilt very quickly. They will go brown very quickly. They will turn yellow and drop off very quickly. It's not a pretty sight. This plant did have one more leaf on it here. It's been pulled off because it was yellow and it was dropping off. That's not even when you get your plant out of the box and you wait a couple of days and then it happens. This kind of damage I'm talking about happens in the box on its way to you. And I find that a lot. So by the time the package gets to you, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time you've already got yellow leaves. And that's when you know it's it's quite a shit plant. Now, are they worth it? Of course they are. I would love to keep a nice big gnarly varicosum at home, but I don't because it constantly gets spider mites and it constantly affects my other plants. So I've had to stop doing that. It is a shame because it is a great plant. I can't really say anything bad about it. 
other than pests and it ships badly. If you can get these beautiful, you'll know how rewarding they are. So I don't really want to discourage people from um, getting these too much. If you're on it with your pest control, you don't mind dealing with spider mites and you've dealt with them before and you, you, you know, you're good at dealing with them and you don't mind getting plants in that look like absolute shit, go for the plant. I think they're beautiful plants. They're really, really nice. Look at this and get up close on this one. Yeah, it's a beautiful plant. If the idea of importing any plant intimidates you, seriously, stay well away from these. There are so many other heart-shaped leaves that you can bring in that are not going to do this to you. Gloriosum, beautiful one. I talk about that plant all the time. It's gorgeous. Get that instead. You'll have a better time. These aren't for the faint-hearted, in my opinion. They, they're just not good to deal with at all, both retail and importing. They're not ideal. The next plant I'd like to talk about, I have I have two or three trays of these. I'm not even kidding. I don't even know when I even got these. I think these are my own propagations from nodes and they've grown that long. Um, this plant I'm about to show you looks a little bit limp, but it's how it's been growing. So it hasn't been on the support that I've now put it on. I've just put it on a mini little stick. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So this plant here is Philodendron gigas and it is very beautiful. I'm not knocking it. It's a gorgeous plant, but they are kind of a nightmare to import. Um, I'll show it to you up close because honestly, it is gorgeous. It honestly is. It's beautiful beautiful plant. You get these really long pointy leaves and these dark kind of melanochrysum, micans -y type leaves. It's a very gorgeous plant. But let me tell you something. Shipping these plants is an awful experience. I don't think I've sold any of this for a long time since I sold the really large ones I had. I've got two large ones over there just growing. And in here, they'll grow quite happily, right? They won't throw a fit. They won't give me any problems. They'll grow nice. This here is quite pretty. It's sellable. It's looking really nice. All these have to do is plump towards the light. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt, right? <laughs> it's just not going to ship well. I already know. It's going to drop leaves. The leaves can often go brown and kind of mushy. It, it doesn't matter how you pack the... Trust me, I've tried. It doesn't matter. These are not very good. Similarly to import them, they will look absolutely terrible when you bring them in. I'm talking like floppy, like dog-eared, like really bad. And it doesn't matter the supplier I've chosen. I've tried different suppliers. They all come in the same. They come in really terrible. Of course, you might have had a different experience. It's a shame, you know, because that's really sellable. I might sell it and see how it goes. Maybe, just maybe, it might make it this time. Maybe I will try. I think I'm going to do a sale coming up soon. I might try and sell it because it's very beautiful and it's, it's grown so nicely. It's a shame to just leave it sat there. But there it is, Philodendron gigas. I, I don't have much faith in these. They are better retail than they are importing. I will say that, but I wouldn't say there's a ton of difference. They're, they're pretty shit either way. They are very finicky with water, very finicky. Um, this one's okay because it's in lecker and it kind of takes what it wants. It's, it's just able to water itself a little bit better, but they're just so temperamental. Shame, beautiful plants. Um, when these get really big as well, they change shape. So if you're interested in that, please Google it. They stop having this long oval shape. And I think they do turn heart shaped, I think. But have a Google and just beware when you bring them in. They're going to look shit for a long time. And when I say a long time, by the way, I'm talking months. I'm not talking weeks. I'm talking months. They look terrible. This plant here is what is known as the Xanthosoma Mickey Mouse. Let me just tilt him like this. Can you see? I'll put him next to me so you can focus. My camera's having a lot of trouble focusing today. This is what's known as Xanthosoma Mickey Mouse. Think of it a little bit like, oh my God, did you see that? Did you see that? Wow. Okay. Well, this proves my point, doesn't it? <laughs> Excellent. So think of it a little bit like an alocasia if you don't know. They, they look very similar. Alocasia, colocasia. They have that kind of growth pattern. They also grow from a comb. This plant, I'm pretty sure this exact plant actually, may or may not have been, it might be a different one. But I remember I got a return a while ago on one of these because it dropped all of its leaves and it pretty much rotted. And that's rotting in transit again. My point is, these work pretty much the same as an alocasia in the way that the leaves will drop. You will end up getting a leaf or two leaves, if you're lucky. And that's about it. It's not going to go well for you. This one is interesting because you probably can't see in the tag here, but it says Xanthosoma half comb because half the comb rotted. The other half was okay. So if you see that, try and remove the rot. You can still grow a plant back from half a comb. I don't know how many people know that, but you can. You can do it from a fragment of a comb. It doesn't have to be the full thing. I mean, obviously it's it's not going well for you if that happens and it's very risky, but it can be done. And this has been. I probably wouldn't sell it. It's not sellable because it is half a comb. I'd have to hope it popped or, or something like that. I find this plant specifically hard to grow, but I don't grow Xanthosoma very well in here. Alocasia I can grow. Xanthosoma for some reason I cannot. So I wanted to mention that. It is 
very similar to Alocasia. This is worse, I would say. Xanthosoma is worse for me. Anything with a comb, be prepared to lose it all. I recently had a variegated banana die. Really sad. That rotted from the comb as well. But when I brought that in, it went down to one leaf. This is what they do. Combs, shipping, no good. So I have to mention that as like a secondary addition to the Alocasia. But both are pretty shit. You know, both are pretty shit. Right, the next plant I'd like to show you, it's not necessarily the specific plant, but it is a representation of anything that is not Monstera deliciosa. So what I'm saying is Monstera generally ship really bad. And that has always surprised me because I always find that they're very vigorous. I always find that as plants, they can go without water very, very well. And I don't really understand why they ship so badly, but it doesn't matter who I buy Monstera from. They generally, unless deliciosa, they do not ship very well at all. So I'm going to hold up one for you here now. I've had this a long time. I really need to cut them all again. But this is Monstera Peru Variegata. I'll tip it up because it's very pretty. Very, very pretty plant. Look at that. Gorgeous. Totally sellable. Actually, I might sell that. That's looking very nice. They ship okay retail. They're not amazing though. And the roots can go. I find that the roots can go. These plants specifically, you get a lot of brown crispiness and almost like burn patches in them. I don't really understand that either. But I've imported into this shop a fair few Monstera in my time. I've done Leschleriana. I've done Panati Partita. I've done Eskeleto, which used to be known as Epipremnoides. That's not as bad. I've done Siltipicana, I've done Peru, I've done quite a lot and they all do the same thing. They all basically go super yellow on arrival and I will never understand it because they're so tough. They're generally very tough and I find that once the plants have acclimated, they're good and you don't get any more problems. With the exception of this one, you don't get any more problems. To import them if they are not deliciosa, honestly, be prepared for the yellow leaves. The only plant that I find is not as bad is the Eskeleto, which I don't have any right now. Well, I do, I have a lot but I don't have anything I can grab. I think they're over there. If I walk back here, you might be able to see on frame. You won't be able to see them specifically, but they're up here in a big tray. I might have more. I don't know. I don't know. So I can't grab those, but those are kind of in between. They don't do too badly after shipping. It kind of depends on the supplier. They tend to be a bit tougher. Everything else, literally everything, is terrible, with the exception perhaps of Monstera Dubai when it is small. That is very important. So when Monstera Dubai is small and it shingles, which I can't show you. I have loads shingling at my walls, but I can't really show you them. They ship great. Actually, they're fantastic shippers, small Dubai, brilliant. But when they get large, like the ones I have on my living wall where they uh, fenestrate, terrible. Literally terrible. Terrible at shipping. I have a few to sell, but I've kind of stopped selling them because they ship so badly. They, they don't do very well at all. This here represents any Monstera that isn't Deliciosa. If you are just buying Deliciosa though, great news for you. They ship quite well. They ship brilliantly actually. Right, listen. Listen, right. <laughs> This could not be a terrible import shipping video without this plant in it. I famously stopped selling this plant and I made a big deal out of stop selling it. I even sent this plant out as a guinea pig to die in the post for basically testing shipping delays to different countries. And I know a couple of you had these from me. I'd like to know if they survived, actually, but I, I can't do this video without talking about this plant. I'm serious. I cannot do it. This here is honestly, it's quite nice. It's quite sizable. If I tip it up, you may or may not know what it is. There's a little clue. This here is Philodendron 69686. And oh my God, I still have a tray of them. And a lot of them are this size now because I haven't done anything with them because I've let them grow. When these things recover in your house, in your conditions, they are great. Classic example. I've got some gray aerials on here. The space between the nodes are pretty good. It does very well in low light. It's got a nice shape to it. Let me just grab him. He's the newest leaf here. He's a nice boy right? He's a nice boy. He's a tall boy. He gives me no trouble until I put him in a box. As soon as I put him in a box, he has a panic attack. Anyone that has had this plant from me, you've probably had a refund. I would go as far as to say that 95% of people that have ever bought this plant from me, it's been refunded. So the thing I like to judge a plant on when it ships, I do say this on my website as well, and it is something to know if you're importing any plant. It's very unusual for you to get a plant in the mail and it doesn't show any signs of stress or any signs of damage, whether that's mechanical damage, i.e. physical tear or fold in the leaf. Obviously, sellers that sell you plants try and stop that, but it's not impossible because things happen with the courier. That can happen. But another thing that can happen when you buy plants is, of course, 
you can get a yellow leaf because the plant has been in darkness for a couple of days and that's just that's just what happens when you ship out plants right it can happen it can even happen when you buy a plant in a shop and you take it home and it doesn't like your house because it's been sat in a greenhouse or something like that it happens the thing i like to say to my customers is if it's one leaf i think you need to accept that as a peril of buying the plant right unless i've sold a plant with one leaf generally i will say to a customer okay it's lost a leaf that kind of happens if a plant is systematically dropping its leaves like this guy right here, then I will deem that to be a problem. That's kind of how I work this out. You know, if I send 20 of these things out or 20 of any plant out, I can work out how good something ships by what comes back to me. Sometimes I ship things out, I never hear from the person again. So I'm like, that's obviously worked well. This plant, however, if you've had one of these plants from me, you know, you know what I'm talking about. What happens is it gets there and it's either got a yellow leaf or it, it, look, it might look fine. It might look fun. And then systematically what's going to happen is over the next week to two weeks, each leaf is just going to drop off. It's just going to drop off. And you're going to be left with a stick, essentially. Will the stick die? Not in my experience, I don't think. I think you can get a plant back from it. But you have to be prepared to lose nearly everything you see in front of you. And as someone that sells plants for a living, uh, I'm not okay with that. I don't think that's an acceptable peril of buying the plant. I think I've said this before about this plant and a lot of people in the comments have gone, yes, I sell these. Oh my God, yes. Or I bought one of these from you. And yes, I remember that. Or I've had this plant generally. And yes, that happens. This plant is terrible to ship. It's terrible to import. It's terrible to ship. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how kind you are. It happens anyway. It hates its life. But... If you manage to get it and you persevere, you can have a beautiful plant. Because I do think this guy's very nice. He's not easy to show because he grows under lights and the light is here. So he's facing all of his leaves upward. He's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But holy shit. Put him in a box. Put him, don't put him in a box. Don't put him in a box. Don't even show him the box. Don't show him the box. If you have boxes in your house, keep them out of the way. Don't, don't let him see it because I, I, I don't even think he likes looking at the boxes because... Holy shit. The only plant that's worse on this list than this plant is probably between Varicosum and Lupinum. Those are my top three really bad shippers. So you've been warned. That's all I can tell you. You've been warned. And that was my top, I don't know what I'm going to call this video, but essentially my top worst plants to import. As I mentioned at the start of the video, something can be terrible to import and not so bad to ship. Sometimes, of course, it depends on your supplier and how the plant is treated and how it responds to it. Generally speaking, these are the types of plants or specific plants in some cases where I would be very wary. Let me know what you think of this list. If you have any plants, maybe you're a seller, maybe you just, you import a lot of plants. I don't know. If you have any plants that you think are notoriously terrible to import, I would love to hear from you in the comments because honestly, I could have put more on this list. Um, I just chose 10. I think I've chosen 10 anyway, but I really want to hear what you think. So feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps me out with the old algorithm. If you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be top 10s, informational stuff, tours, anything you like, then please hit that subscribe button. Because fun fact, only 50% of you that watch me are actually subscribed. Someone did tell me the other day that they were actually unsubscribed from me. And I do know that that happens because it happens to me with people I'm subscribed to. So feel free to check your subscriptions and see if I'm actually in there because I might magically not be. I don't know what YouTube is doing there, but it happens, I suppose. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.